Okay, it's 6.30. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Everybody stand. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, beautiful. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you want to do free and rentals? <laughs> You're squeaky tonight. Do you want to do free and rentals and force bonds? No, I don't. No. Uh, the first one on the appointments is 630, Grand Fire Department, Todd Carpenter. Come on up. We have the Chiefs, Captain President. Come up for just a minute. Yes. See how I can get the cheese up here. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening for letting me take a couple minutes of your time. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Todd Carpenter. I'm the uh, department historian. And I'd like to uh, point out um, the chiefs of the department, uh, less a couple. Um, this is who the town of Granby has entrusted with the public safety of the, of the fire department. Uh, since 1938. And about this time in 1938, June 18th, 1938, uh, the fire department formed. And I have the original rules here that I'm just going to quickly read. Um, we, the undersigned, have met this night, June 18th, 1938, and organized a voluntary fire department for the prevention and expulsion of fires in the township of Granby, Mass. And there's some basic rules here, and they're assigned by 14 original members, and then as members joined, uh, they also signed these very rules. Also, started tonight, let's the Granby Firefighters Association. And with the truck that originally was going to have down here, Granby's first truck, um, was purchased at the town meeting of February of 1938. Um, weather has kept it in the garage this evening. But together, the two organizations, so the, the Granby Fire Department and the Granby Firefighters Association, have worked to protect the town of Granby, and the association has worked diligently to support the fire department in those efforts. It's 80 proud years, and we thank the residents of the town of Granby and the Board of Selectmen for your support over those 80 years, and we thank you very much. And we thank these gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you. It's been an honor to have you people present. We're going to be uh, stepping outside for photos at the end of the building. Okay. Thank you. Avoid the raindrops. Be careful. Yeah. We're going to be here quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, National Grid. That's a 35. How are you this evening? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Yeah. The last one's already here. Yeah, this one says 7.15 until 7.15 now. Again? So there yeah. must be another range coming through. Yeah. Is National Grid ready for all these tornadoes that are being predicted? Well, for? I did stop actually. I did I get a message and I stopped at Atkins for a few minutes because it was pretty dark ahead of me. And it was pretty dark behind me, and I heard heard that there was some tornadoes crossing over Granby near, near the Chicopee Line. So really? I thought I'll give it a few minutes. Because I was here and you're up in Conway. I also heard that there was a, a line of them coming through Conway as well. Yes. So. There was. I think there was a report of Chesterfield, but I think that that was mistaken. I think it was Conway all the time. Um, we again. Yes. Uh, yep. Okay. I don't recall which hearing is first. What's your name? Dr. Street. Uh, yeah, Dr. Street. Okay. Uh, this is your That's your procedure to follow. Okay, call in. Is it going to order a separate item from the agenda? Uh, National Grid Approval Hearing, Master Street, number 242-704-37. Is there a motion to approve the Master Street? 
I shall, yes. Legal notice, public hearing, Town of Granby. The select board will hold a public hearing on Monday, June 18th at 6.35 p.m. at the Senior Center Public Building located at 10B West 8th Street, Granby, Mass. to grant permission to National Grid to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, include necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures of said poles to erect substantially in accordance with the plan filed here within marked Bachelor Street, Grammy, Massachusetts. Bachelor Street, National Grid to install one SO, SO solely owned. Okay, solely owned pole on side of road to bring power to property of 362 Bachelor Street to a new home. The location begins approximately 1,295 feet west of the center line intersection of School Street. Location approximately as shown on plan 24270437, April 28, 2018. Also, for permission to lay and maintain underground lateral cables and wires in the above or intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. Copies of proposed plan dot Blatchworth Street, Grammy Mass, <coughs> 2427 Grammy, Massachusetts, are available in the Board of Selections Office 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon on Friday, located at 10B West 8th Street, Senior Center, Center Building, second floor. So we are looking for permission it's, it's, we're to set an, an additional pole. It's a mid-span pole. Mm -hmm. We're bringing power into that uh, the new home at 362. We have to bring primary in. Right now there's a transformer on that pole that we would, would be a junction to go in, but we can't have a primary tap and a transformer on the same pole. So setting this mid-span pole, I'll move the transformer down to short ways and then tap off of that pole to go into uh, this property. Okay. Any proponents? Any? She was. What? She, she was. Is. A proponent. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Sometimes the customer's a proponent, but I don't, I don't see him. <laughs> but I don't see him here. Any opponents to speak? Nope. Uh, shall we just do we close this one first? Okay. Make a motion to close the, the hearing. I'll make a I will second the motion. We all agree. All in favor? Aye. Uh, National Grid Pole Hearing, Amherst Street. Uh, no, not yet. We yeah, we'll now need to discuss and decide are you approving the proposed pole location? We just close the hearing. Bachelor Street. You now need to discuss and approve the request. Right. Anybody, anybody have any discussion? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, said poll for uh, electricity for 362 Bachelor Street. Yes, 362 Bachelor. And I will second Glenn's motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I have two copies of those. Nice and I call a meeting to order a separate item from the agenda. National Grid Pool Hearing, Amherst Street, Granby, Mass, number 2601-6804. A legal notice public hearing for the Town of Granby. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, June 18th at 6.40 p.m. at the Senior Center Building located at 10B West State Street, Granby, Mass, to grant permission to National Grid to locate poles, wires, fixtures, 
include a necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures of said poles to be erected substantially in accordance with the plan filed herewith marked Amherst Street, Granby, Massachusetts. Amherst Street, National Grid proposes to install three new mid-span poles in order to resolve a clearance issue due to long spans beginning at existing pole number six, northerly to pole number six, uh, 1,100 feet to north of center line of intersection of West State Street and continuing approximately 720 feet in a northerly direction. Location approximately as shown on plan 26016804, May 3rd, 2018. Also for, mission per, also for permission to lay and maintain underground lateral cables and wires in the above or intersecting public <coughs> ways for the purpose of marking connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. Copies of proposed plan Amherst Street, Granby, Mass. 26016804 Grammy, Massachusetts are available in the Board of Selectmen's office 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon on Friday, located at 10B West 8th Street, Senior Center Building, second floor. All right, so this is just resolving very low wires. There's some long spans and they really need to be raised quite a bit. So setting these three mid-span poles will resolve that issue. I did take a look at the a look at them. They're kind of strategically placed. I mean, you know, they're in front of some trees that you know the house that it's in front of won't really notice the pole so much. And one's directly on a property line between two houses, and the next one is also, um, you know, just be just in front of some trees before a driveway. So that's also not right in front of a home. Any? Do we have the? Can I? Oh. You have your name and address? Yes, Stephanie Berry, 38 Amber Street. Okay. Okay. I will show you if you want, Stephanie, because I did take a ride by. So I wrote here, like, this is number 34, you're 38. Oh, okay. So the pole, the, this pole, it's actually before the one that's oh, close, okay. closest to your house. And I just wrote wooded area just before the driveway to number 34. Oh, okay. It's like right across from oh. the stand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Could I just take a peek at that? Sure. I'm uh, Christian Renegar from yeah. 27 Amherst Street. I'm a okay. resident. My parents own the Yep. House. Yep. So I did. I did see this stake, and it's you've got that line of trees, and the and the house sits back. I really don't think that anybody's gonna. You've got a pole on the same side of the street. You know, two poles here. You know. So just, you this the black dot here is yep. the one you want to put right. one in. Yes, and there's a white stake there. Okay. In, in the, um, the problem is it might be too close to uh, our existing sewer line from the house. Okay. To the street. Okay. And so so what happens when we call Dick Safe is that uh, Granby actually subs subscribes to Dick Safe, and their um, water and their sewer departments would be notified through that uh, mm -hmm. subscription. And they will go out in the market. So they'll just shift it a little bit this way or that way. Mm -hmm. But either way, it's like a row of trees. So it really kind of blocks the house from the poles that are out in the street. Enough that, you know, it shouldn't be seen. The wires are going across there. But yep. um, Now, this one is considerably leaning. Uh, which which one are you saying? Uh, the one in front of 31. It might lean a little bit, too. Oh. The, the, the pole the pole themselves are leaning? Yeah. So the struck yeah. the pole. Mm -hmm. So this is oh, the see, end of 27. See, there's, see there's the white stick. Yeah, yep. So there it is. So our sewer line runs right down that hill. Okay, I'll make sure that I make a note of that. So that he's just showing me this. Are they gonna like so this, the poles too? Well, you know, they will. Sometimes when they get out there, this, this part of that leaning mm -hmm. is the pull because that, that took some stretches. slack somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And so that it's just gonna it's just gonna alleviate some of that. It's gonna okay. lift those wires and it's gonna stop that. They'll they they should, you know eventually get out there and straighten mm -hmm. out some poles that are leaning and if it continues feel free to you know give us a call because well, I'll go out and take a little bit of look. Okay. But I'll, I'll actually address that with you. We've had Christine May you from uh, 27 Hour Street. We've had this ex these existing poles for many many years uh -huh. and it seems like as a result of this incident that happened um, several months ago that's what necessity or drew the poles down causing the lag in the wire. And what was it? Was it something that came down on the wires? The vehicle had struck the oh. lines and pulled it. Kept, kept going. Oh. So, I, so I questioned the necessity of this whole thing, mm -hmm. whether it's really 
necessary? Like, is it is it really necessary, or is it more practical to repair or to solidify those poles that are already there and raise the levels, or replace the poles that are there and raise the levels mm -hmm. of the water? The, the thing is, is that um, old construction, I, we used to go as far as 300 spans in between poles, but there's so much more weight on the poles mm -hmm. with communications. Yeah. That they like to, they that they really don't like to go much more than 150 feet. Okay. okay. So when they have an opportunity to straighten out a problem like this, they, the preference really would be, and the standard would be, to put a new pole in. Okay. Our biggest concern is the sewer, mm -hmm. the sewer line. Yeah. That's and I will make a big note of that okay. and make sure that that's, you know, that that's clearly marked. And then we'll just shift it this way or that way a little bit, but still okay. alleviate that long span. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. For the record, ma'am. For the record, do we have your name and your address also? Yes, Christine Mayhem, 27 Amherst Street. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Wilson? Okay. I believe so. Okay. Close the, close the public comment portion of the hearing. No. I make a motion. Uh, we grant to National Grid uh, to install three new mid-span mid -span poles in order to resolve a clearance issue due to the long spans on Amherst Street beginning existing number pole six, northerly to pole six, 1100 feet north of the center line and the intersection of West State Street and continues on approximately 720 feet to a northerly direction location apparently as shown on plan 26016804 dated May 3rd, 2018. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Here's Steve. Thank you. November 19, 2018, Sunday through Saturday. Arrival time, 4 p.m. Departure time, 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Arrival time, 8 a.m. Departure time, 8 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. No liquor. Maximum number of people, 140. Period to be used the large soccer field and front field. GA fall soccer games and practices. Next one is for a kid's birthday party on July 28, 2018. Pavilion number one on the Taylor Street side near the Pond Road. Uh, arrival time is 11 a.m. Departure time is 4 p.m. No liquor. Maximum number of people is 48. And the last one is GAA soccer from August 13, 2018. 
2018 to November 19, 2018, Sunday through Saturday. Arrival time, 4 p.m., departure time, 8 p.m., Monday through Friday. Arrival time, 8 a.m., departure time, 8 p.m., Saturday through Sunday. No liquor, maximum number of people, 140. The area being used, soccer fields located near the play structure and area in front of the gazebo on the Taylor Street side. And those are the two frame rentals. Motion that we accept departmental reports. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. I like a motion we approve and sign maintenance warrant fiscal year 18, number 74, 75, and 76. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, one day option here, license? Yes. At the last meeting, uh, yep. Happy Days had come into the board regarding okay. the conduction of a, conducting a auction at his property. Mm -hmm. We indicated to him that it required a license in order to be able to do so. Mm -hmm. He filed up, filed the proper paperwork, and here is the license okay. approval. I'm going to make a motion to grant a permit to Rocher, Rocher Brothers, Rocher. Rocher Brothers Auctioneer. And Happy Days Family Fun Spot, located at 172 West State Street, and said town of Granby to hold a one-day consignment auction on June 23, 2018. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Appointments. These so are the appointments that we do every year. There's a copy for each one of you. These are appointments to the various uh, committees and ad hoc committees um, and various appointed uh, officials for the town of Grandview. When well, I review these earlier, I didn't get a chance to see it first. Um, on the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission representative? Okay. Here's the chair. What the board has done in the past is I've reviewed page by page yep. and then approved the page as presented. Okay. Do you want to just go through it? We'll just go through it for sure. On page one, you have the Almers of the Whiting Street Fund, the Americans with Disabilities Act Committee, the Auxiliary Reserve Police Officers for the Police Department, Board of Appeals. We notice there's only two people listed. They're, they're a staggered term for the five-member board. Cable Advisory, Cable TV Advisory Committee, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Charter Day Committee, Chief Procurement Officer, Commissioner of Trust Funds, Conservation Commission. If you notice, we do have one vacancy. Uh, Wilmot Lewis had resigned due to uh, health issues, so we need to find someone to fill that position. Did Linda? Conservation Commission? Yeah, what about well, Linda? Yeah. Linda never told me anything. Okay. Why? Just wonder. I don't okay. see your name there. No, because her term is enough. Oh, okay. Okay. If you notice, the, the terms for the two people are after 2021, it's a three year oh, okay. term. They also are a staggered group. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, constables, we have, and then council and agent, we have the next page, but I'll read on that. Right. So does the board wish to approve the names as presented on page one? Do you need a motion for that? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, appointing uh, all the names to prospective boards on page one. I will second the motion. All right, everybody in favor? Aye. Aye. On page two, we have Council on Aging Board of Directors. We have the dog officer, the alternate dog officer, electrical inspector, both the inspector and assistant inspectors, emergency management director and assistant emergency management director, ethics commission liaison, finance committee, fire and ambulance department, the fire chief, and then the call force for fire and ambulance. I'll make a motion uh, that we appoint as read uh, individuals on page number two I'll to your prospective motion. boards and committees. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 On page three, we have the forest warden, gas inspector, and the assistant gas inspector, Granby Agricultural Commission, Granby Energy Committee, Hampshire County Insurance Advisory Committee, that's the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust that the town belongs to for health insurance. Hampshire Regional Emergency Planning Council, harassment officers. Right now we're waiting to get a female to be appointed to there. We don't have any to fill the position okay. since Jessica. And that's a yearly appointment? Yes. Uh, then we have Hazard Mitigation Committee, the Historical Commission, Historic District Commission, and if you notice, there's one vacancy there for, I think, to replace Robert Camus. Inspector of Buildings, the Building Commissioner, and the Local Building Inspector. Local Emergency Planning Committee, and Local Licensing Agents that continue on to page four. And the reason we do a Local Licensing Agent is that if they're that gives the police officers the ability to go into local establishments that are serving up here, wine and alcohol, mm -hmm. to observe that they're following the rules correctly. Otherwise, the police officers are going to be allowed to go in here to monitor what was going on. I'm going to make a motion that we uh, appoint uh, from page three and top of page four individuals to noted boards committees and said positions. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. On page four, we have the Marijuana Bylaw Ad Hoc Committee, Mount Holyoke Range Advisory Committee, the Municipal Hearing Officer, the Parking Clerk and the Assistance to the Parking Clerk, Parks Oversight Ad Hoc Committee, Personnel Board, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission representative and alternate, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission Joint Transportation Committee, Pioneer Valley Transportation PD Authority, our representative that, that was Jessica also. We haven't found anybody to replace her at this point in time. Plumbing Inspector and the Assistant Plumbing Inspector, the <coughs> Police Department, Police Chief, and the part-time officers. And then we have full-time officers that continues over on to page five. I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, set red names to the noted boards, committees, and positions on page four and top of page five. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 On page five, we have the police dispatcher, clerk, and matron. We have the police dispatchers, matron, police advisory committee, 
Public Library Director, Public Safety Liaison, Right to Know Coordinator, Design Officer, Stormwater Phase 2 Committee, Town Accountant, Town Council, and Assistant Town Council, Tree Warden, Town Bylaw Review Committee, Veteran War Memorial Committee. That continues on to page six. I'll make a motion that we can appoint said red names to the board's committees and positions on page five and on top of page six. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then on page six, we have the West Street School Building Committee, Western Mass Regional Local Emergency, plus the alternate, Westover Metropolitan Development Corp representative, and the Zoning Enforcement Officer. I'll make a motion that we appoint said names read to the committees and positions uh, noted on page number six. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 For an update on the Economic Development Committee, I have received a preliminary commitment from Brian Hostroud to serve on the committee. Okay. I have received a preliminary agreement by William Porter to serve on the committee. Uh, I don't know who would want to sit on there from the planning board or the board of selectmen. And another name was has been suggested, but I have not had a chance to contact, and that would be Bill Johnson. Well, when we created the uh, committee last week, I said I'd do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to yeah. be the? Yeah. I'll do it. With so he's the selectman rep. You know, we just need somebody from planning. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll look for someone. And then that would be a committee of five, and I don't know if you want to continue trying to find, make it a committee of seven or whatever, but, but I know Scott Merrill had indicated he would be interested in serving on it. Mm -hmm. However, his uh, schedule does not allow him to be able to serve at this point. Okay. Yeah, he had to wait at least two years to finish his appointment with the So I thought that was a start of a good committee. Yeah. I don't know if the yeah. board has any other members they would like to bring forward to it. No, it sounds good. You know, I don't know if you want to bring it up to see if maybe Jim wants to serve and plan because he brings a buffer for business and a I, I was gonna perspective. I was going to ask him. I'll ask him. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you have anybody else from the five well, corners area. Yeah. You want. I, I think either him or, or Bob. They both own businesses. Bob okay. owns business town, so. Okay. I'll okay. see. I'll ask them both. Yeah. So. I don't know if you have any members. No, no, Steve, any kind of no, no, pan. But, okay. So if the board has no other, I'll continue. I'll check with Bill Johnson, see if he's willing, and then uh, maybe we can get the committee appointed and going at the next meeting. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Good. Then the last item is. Can you hand that down to Mr. Joseph? Yes, sir. Oh, Governor Charlie Baker signed off. Yeah. Very good. I try to give it to you in the Reader's Digest format. Last Thursday, I met for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, which is called the MVP program. I met with the Lieutenant Governor Polito, Secretary of the Energy Environment, Matt Beaton, and the Assistant Secretary of Climate Change, Kathleen Theoro. And at that time, they awarded the Town of Granby a grant so we could do a study. The purpose of the grant is to address any climate change concerns. At the roundtable discussion, with the other communities that were going to do this. Uh, in fact, the Lieutenant Governor pointed this out. Uh, Massachusetts had had six 100-year storms in the last 10 years. And wow. they say it's contributed to climate change. Whether it is or isn't, I'm not a scientist. They just say it's contributed. Okay. And that with the wind, rain, snow, etc. 
the main thing we're going to be doing on this committee is looking at water does to the infrastructure, whether it's from rain or from groundwater. Uh, the people from UMass have stated that the groundwater table is coming up. If it comes up too far, could damage the leach fields or the water could be contaminated from the leach fields. So I asked the Lieutenant Governor at that time uh, about Granby not having sewers, and uh, she said, well, if we find that the wells are getting contaminated or the leaching of the septic systems are contributing to either the wetlands, the rivers, the streams, she says that we're going to have to do something about it. She took a note. The Energy Secretary says as far as he's concerned, it's already an issue in the climate uh, change. Secretary says UMass has already identified it as an issue. So we may get some help down the road with suits. Well, may, may, may refer to Grammy. Any community that has problems with any leaching of into the groundwater table. But no one's, no one's, it's not being said that Grammy has any problems. The purpose of the grant we received is to do a study, study. Okay. to determine, to, to determine oh. what the projects are in the municipality here as well as the state. What will happen is after our study is completed and goes to Boston, all the other communities that are in the same boat of us, all their projects will be prioritized. There's no cap on expense to cure a problem. They will prioritize the problems that they can fund. So is that something we could use for the dam? Exactly. The dam point? is one of the items that I had mm -hmm. talked about, and they said yes. The top floating, cause of flooding to infrastructure of dams, floodplains, rivers, lakes, bridges, roads, etc. And the bottom, as I explained, is contamination of wells and mm -hmm. other groundwater, whether it's going off the Connecticut River, streams, whatever. Yeah. And uh, when they brought that up, the big thing the energy secretary said was the funding aspect of it. So at that time, since he was the energy secretary, I asked him about the SMART program, because that's one thing we were looking at for ourselves. And he says that right now the SMART program is in the uh, state attorney's hands to changing it possibly to allocating so much to municipalities and not just a blanket where the solar dome developers can go do whoever they want. But he says until it passes the state attorneys, they are not going to change anything. He's hoping they'll get a change before they publish the grant for FY19. But he said there's no guarantee with the attorneys. And then everybody laughed once he, once he put that up. Okay. And then based upon what they find, like I said, the second year is considered action grants. What pro projects are picked? That one would be the actions taken. You passed it down to Chris. Okay, then on Friday, I went to uh, drive after 55 with Senator Eric Lesser, and he has one of those little stress balls for all of the town administrators, and he asked me to bring one back to Chris. Who has stress? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but he, uh, Eric Lesser, Senator Eric Lesser, wanted to recognize all the town administrators for all what they do every day. And so he asked me to bring this to Chris, so I said, I'd be happy to do that. That's all he's got? That's it? That's it? That's no, all he's got. No bottle? No, <laughs> no, no nothing. Just get a little ball that looks like a brain that you can squeeze when you have it stress. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, and uh, it's something that I'll probably put out of the picnic tomorrow. The Thrive After 55 event by Senator Eric Lesser is not only very well attended, it's very well organized and there's a lot of information for the seniors. My wife and okay. I both went. Um, I would recommend it for anybody 55 and over, either prepare for retirement or in retirement. And they had a lot of cost savings for the people in retirement. And all the people there that we were talking to we're quite impressed with it. And they have loads of raffles for the participants. And I'm talking high-priced raffles too, in addition to loads. So 
So it's a, it was a fun event. It really was. It was from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Do you qualify? I do not qualify. Okay. No. Not, not 55. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> okay, that's really all I have based upon the MVP program, and I just threw in Senator Lesser. Uh, as far as this program goes, uh, I believe Chris is going to end up signing it if we agree to go with it, correct? Because <laughs> 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 it's a standard contract, but, uh, and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will be the consultants doing it for us. So the money will go directly to them, so we don't have to worry about anything, except we will have to participate in two workshops to get it. We have to supply them the data. They'll ask yeah. as far as we'll get the data. Okay. Then they'll create the report. They'll come back to us as well as Pioneer Valley, and then they'll forward it on the Boston. Good. So, two more items under the Two more items under the Meta Grant. Oh, yeah. And LTA funds. Okay. One Meta Grant and LTA funds. Uh, can I get that back, please? Yes, you can. Okay, Metagram. Uh, we received notice that there's a Metagram, uh, which is a Municipal Energy Technical Assistance Grant. There is a list of projects that we are eligible for. I have already talked to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. They are going to fill the application out for us. But we have to decide what project we want. Glenn, I guess the easiest way for you is remember when I did that other grant for the planning board? Oh. We had to pick a project. Yep. This is basically the same thing, same but thing. it's all projects based upon energy. That's why it's okay. a better grant for Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources. Uh, I don't know if you want to leave it to Chris and I to pick the project. You want to get involved. We can send it out however you guys want it. I think the date is. July the 16th, Chris, has to be in by. So we do have time, but I just wanted to throw it out there now to see how much you want to be involved with it. Yeah, I'd definitely like to be involved and with it. And then we'll just, I'll have Kathy email everybody a copy because what I did is I done it all. Yeah. So I already have it. That's good. That's good stuff. Yep. And on the, what do you call it, the uh, local TLA grant. Like I said, Pioneer Valley is going to do the complete application for us at no charge to us. And what does that stand for, Jay? The TLA Local grant? Technical Assistance, okay. LTA. LTA. Remember the funding board got the LTA funds? Right, that was yep. the district local. Yeah. Same, Same thing. thing. Same idea. Same idea, yeah. just one district Different. local. Just the left pocket instead of the right pocket. Right. Uh-huh. But you weren't <laughs> sad when I got that grant. No, I'm not <laughs> sad now either. <laughs> And um, I've been told by uh, Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources that the green community should be out by the end of this month. It's been delayed on awarding because the state got so much of that Volkswagen uh, money. Wow, right. So they said they wanted to delay it to fund as many green communities in full as they could. But because if they release the grant already, they cannot add more money later this physical year. So that's why those They're grants waiting. are coming out a little bit on the late side. And uh, I'll just add on the uh, economic development. We had that meeting last week. Yes, yep. School that was week. Thursday. Uh, I had an action item there. I've arranged Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is going to have somebody come in and act as a planner to do a presentation to the entire group to get everybody on the same sheet of music what is really a planner for the economic development. And they're going to do that for us at no charge as long as I do an energy presentation to the municipal. So, so we traded one for one on that because there is no more money left. The local technical assistance grant has been depleted. So they asked me to do one and I said, yeah, I'll do it if you give us this. Well, thank you, Jay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, before helps us out. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely so helps us we'll, out. We'll be moving forward with that and the economic growth that Chris put out, but you know the other committee as well that we were talking about, the school committee and the finance committee. That's going to have to fall under the executive board's economic growth committee in some way, shape, or form. It's all to be determined. You right. know that as well as I do. Yeah. Because you were both there. 
Hmm. Now, is there anything you want me to go over that I may have missed here with all that stuff? I don't know what's on your list. Well, I think I've pretty covered it pretty <laughs> good, but uh, in case you have any questions. Oh, the only other thing, remember we talked about the economic growth, we wanted to put out a, um, if they wanted to put out an ad, Chris, to see if any people are interested. Is that something we can do? Can well, I was finding enough people right now at this point. Okay. By putting the word out. We can put it out and say, hey, if you're interested. We, we, we wanted people to be part of it that aren't part of a board or part of a committee. You know, we want us, we, yeah. Yeah. I was looking for businessmen in town. Yeah. It, it, just anybody who wants to be part of it that has a, a vested interest in it. So. Got everything? Yeah, I've got everything covered there. Approval well, minutes. Minutes. Meeting, minute. Meeting minutes. Remember what? May 22nd. I want to make a motion that. Uh, Except the departmental report now. No. Very good. Meeting, minutes. Minutes. Meeting minutes? Yes. Item number four. Minutes. Go up top. Category number four. Minutes. Oh, the minutes. Yeah. May 24th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should be May 22nd. May 22nd. 2018. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes uh, from May 22nd, 2018. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I do want to remind the board that we will not be meeting on July Monday, July 2nd. We will be meeting on Tuesday, July 10th, at which point we will have our hearing for the marijuana bylaw review prior to scheduling our town meeting in August. And we will also conduct our regular board meeting on said day. That's going to be the marijuana public hearing, right? By, bylaw public hearing, right. yes. And we will be both doing both the proposed zoning bylaw and the proposed general bylaw at the same time. Sure that members of your board are present, or at least the quorum. Yes. Present yes. For that <clears throat> and with that being the second Tuesday in July, do you still want to hold our second meeting the Monday following, or do you, would you just want to wait and see if there is a need for a second meeting in July? I just think we wait and see. Yeah, if I we think need we to. Wait and see. Okay. Uh, not, then we could. So we, we should probably plan on the 2nd of July then signing the Metagrant? July 10th. That's what I meant, July 10th. Okay. We should plan on signing the Metagrant on that date. July 10th. Right. Yes. So that'll be one of the agenda items. So we can make sure we don't miss the suspense date. And that's all I have for the board. All right. I'm going to make a motion that we... Adjourn. Close the meeting. Adjourn. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.